Smart Notebook Collaborative Learning Software. We're going to be taking some time to review the Notebook Collaborative Learning Software. Basic layout and functionality if you're not already familiar with this uh, application. We'll also be taking some time to um, identify some of the instructional, where the instructional value of Notebook truly lies. And of course also looking at uh, some instructional strategies around the integration of Notebook and the creation of uh, interactive uh, classroom activities and lessons. When we talk about Notebook Collaborative Learning Software, just want to draw your attention to the fact that um, recently announced is the introduction of Smart Notebook Express. Smart Smart Notebook Express will be a free, lightweight, web-based version of Notebook, um, making Notebook, the software, and all resources developed um, in Notebook accessible not only to smart teachers, but to educators around the world. When we talk about the software, let's just give you a basic introduction. I'm going to Go ahead and grab my tools up here, select my pen, and draw your attention to the fact that along the top we see our basic toolbars with functionality that includes arrow page forward, arrow page back, add a blank page, many features you're already familiar with. I strongly encourage you to take the time to review those features. Along the side we have our basic side tabs. Let me go right back to my select tool. The side tab that's currently selected is my page sorter, allowing me to preview via thumbnails the page, uh, the pages within my lesson, as well as the highlighted page indicating the page that we're currently viewing. Other tabs include my gallery tab, where I can access uh, existing resources um, just by dragging and dropping those directly onto the work area. I'll go ahead and shrink that down. Stick that off into the corner there, Abe. Um, tabs including the Attachments tab, where I can attach multiple file types, giving me access simply by double-clicking on these files. Um, if I'm sharing this lesson with a colleague, another teacher, etc. Properties tab, so I can any selected object within the work area has properties through which I can change those properties. Uh, everything within the notebook software um, is a learning object. So every the basics of the collaborative learning software is that objects within the work area, the work area defined as the white uh, space, uh, everything can be dragged or dropped. Any selected object can be resized quickly with a white resize handle, rotated through the green rotate handle, and drop-down options, a uh, drop-down menu provides additional functionality including the one-touch copy-paste known as clone, etc. Even my text box represents an object. I can drag and drop. Double click on that text box allows me to edit that text. So given the basic functionality and recognizing my tools are along the top, my side tabs, my are all items on the in the work area are objects, I can now create very interactive lessons. And we start thinking about the instructional value of notebook. I'll draw your attention to thinking about um, aspects of the 21st century classroom. When we talk about the 21st century classroom, one thing we can be confident is that uh, um, your definition of the 21st century classroom may not be the same as mine, but my guess is that there's some technology in that classroom. And if we think about what this technology has brought the classroom teacher, um, I think back to when I first started teaching and I had access to a computer. Bringing that computer into the class and giving access to a teacher basically provided access. Access to this great big world, digital content and digital resources. Those educators who have access to a digital projector in combination with their computer now have the ability to share. Share with a larger audience, their students, the digital content and resources that they can now access um, through their computer. 
document cameras or scanners now allowing teachers to stream dig digital content in real time. So taking non-digital content and displaying that, sharing that in a digital means, uh, capturing that information. All this buzz around interactive whiteboards and wireless slates providing mouse click control and the ability to annotate basically allow the educator to engage or interact with the digital content and resources that they can now access through their computer share with a larger audience with their projector or stream live through their uh, document camera or scanner all of this technology is great but what I would highlight is that none of this technology is focused specifically on the classroom teacher or on education. And that's where the software comes in. The software that has the ability to tie all of this technology together more effectively is where the true power of teaching starts. This is the true teaching tool. So if we bring up a basic image here. This is an image of what's called a stereogram. The only thing I can tell you about this stereogram is that buried deep inside in a third dimension there is information stored. Many of you may have seen these in malls, uh, also possibly referred to as magic eyes. Um, people have instructed you to cross your eyes or to focus behind it in order to pull out that information. We're going to come back to this image in just one second. Because this image is where we really need to focus our attention on professional development. We all recognize that professional, all this technology in the classroom means nothing without professional development. And that technology and technology alone does not make the teacher. So if we recognize that computers, interactive whiteboards, document cameras, etc., these all represent tools, tools for the classroom teacher. And of course, without the skills, tactics, and strategies for effectively integrating these tools to create more effective, more interactive lessons, all of this is for naught. So if we go back to this stereogram, like I indicated before, I can tell you, tell them blue in the face that there's information embedded inside here. But if you don't have the ability to pull this information out, it could be lost. And again, I can tell you that there's a teapot in a third dimension buried inside this picture, but the goal is to create lessons that allow the students to pull this information out. As a high school science teacher, one could imagine that uh, the periodic table, much like a stereogram, provides information embedded inside it that students have to pull out. Because I can tell you, much like that stereogram picture with the teapot, that there's information embedded inside this periodic table. And we can talk to her blue in the face about the properties of about group 7 and, and what group 7 tells us about the number of electrons in the outer shell of elements or of these atoms and how knowing the number of electrons in the outer shell of these atoms tells us something about how these atoms, these elements might interact with other elements on the periodic table. Or if I am if I'm teaching primary, the multiplication table might be, look like a stereogram, much like a periodic table in the secondary sciences. Because much like that stereogram, again, I'm telling you that there's information embedded inside here, and you just need to be able to figure out how to pull this information out. And as the educator, we recognize that the multiplication table simply tells us the product of any two numbers, one number along the horizontal and one number along the vertical. And where these two numbers meet, that is the product of these two numbers. So here I've used blue boxes to help guide, the, guide our eyes. So if we are asking what the product of 5 times 5 is, we can follow these blue boxes and identify that the product of 5 times 5 is 25. I've also indicated the magic pin here because with the magic pin within Notebook, for sharing this with students in the back of the room, I can bring in the magic pin which recognizes a square as an area to magnify. So I can magnify this area such that students in the back of the room could, I could see it. I'm going to go back to my select tool, select the red X in the top right hand corner to go ahead and exit out of the 